Hey, it's been a while. It's 2024, so hope you are off to a great start of the year. Try not to tell your goals because whenever you say it out loud, you usually release dopamine within your brain, kind of tricking your mind as if you're achieving it. So build in silence, kind of like work um, in stealth mode, let's say. And I hope to be creating hopefully more videos throughout this year but my schedule has changed once again. So I think on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'll be doing live streams um, as well as on the weekends as well. But I promised you a vlog when I went to Korea. It's been three years since I've, I've been there. So I got a chance to visit my uncle and my grand grandma. And I haven't seen them for around five years because the last time I was in Korea, I wasn't able to see them so it was kind of cool seeing them because there was such a huge time gap and like they carry a little bit of my childhood memories and to kind of see them change and see how they perceive me now kind of as an adult was really fascinating just to experience um i think that's why like let's say childhood friends or family members are so important throughout our lives because these people carry a part of our identity with that stated hope you enjoy this some of the documentation that i made throughout the journey and hope i do a good job of kind of sharing some of the beauties of uh, south korea a lot of the clips like towards the end it's about the national museum and that was probably a really cool highlight of the trip yeah enjoy Hello, oh, it's currently December 15th. I finished my final and I'm currently waiting for the bus because Uber's charging me almost $100 and I think it's like 45 minute drive. So instead, I'm taking the bus here. So I just walked around 20 minutes. It's kind of a nice view, nice weather. We're taking this, uh, this bus right here. All right, so I just landed in Las Vegas airport. It's currently 8.50 and I'm looking at my boarding pass and it's at 10.10. So I have a two hour and nine minute according to this boarding pass. And I have to show you something really unique about Las Vegas, which is just a very popular in terms of entertainment. We got the Bellagio, a lot of shows. I think F1 is also, I think held here, I believe in 2024. What else? We got the Sphere. And there's just a lot of entertainment space, it seems like. And you know, one thing about Las Vegas is they love gambling. So if you come to the airport, let me show you. They got gambling centers. Isn't that fun? We're not done yet, there's more. This is a different section. Are you winning? No. <laughs> yeah. Hope you win some. Wow. There's more. It doesn't end. And then this is where we gotta go. We gotta take a tram. But that's pretty cool, isn't it? Welcome to Vegas. This one's gotta be the most active one so far. Check this one. <laughs> it's so 
funny. Whoa. It's so funny. So funny how there's so many machines everywhere. There's a lot of clubs here too. For like status and prestige. This is the Korean pizza. After reuniting with my family, <laughs> which is the best feeling ever, I kind of went on a food craze. So <laughs> with the family, we went to this place called Beijing Duck. We had some duck and this really cool dumpling. And then we went to a food court. This is not in one day. This is just over the span of a week. There's a thing called takochi, which is just like chicken on steak. But they have like this delicious flavor. I can't even explain it. Um, and obviously, I had to go to the convenience store to recollect my memories. So, enjoy this mukbang. We gotta try out this banana, banana milk. And then, where's the, is this one? Some sausage. And then we'll have one of these. And then there needs to be some cheese. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm just drooling. Alright. Let's get this. the banana milk for a reason. I feel like a kid again. Mm. <laughs> I don't usually eat this unhealthy, but today's an exception. Mm. Jeez. It's really hot. But this is like the type of food I would eat after going to academy during my 30 minute breaks. And this is my favorite flavor. It even has eggs. Did you see that? It has an egg. I did this one wrong. It's okay. I'm making a mess here. I'll clean it up. Mm. This one's called Cheopokum. And it's, um, I think it's pork. It's 
spicy pork. Mm. Okay. The texture, the meat, the temperature of the foods. Whenever I eat like food from the past that I used to eat when I was young, I feel like I'm time traveling. So hot. I'm gonna try eating a couple more bites and eat it with like banana milk. <sighs> Never mind. I'm gonna cut it here. I hope you enjoy. We're at a place called Passion Five, I believe. Look at this Christmas tree. Gosh. I feel like I'm at Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. Look at how adorable some of these decorations are. Look, for Christmas, we got Minion, Santa Claus. <laughs> the decorations are so adorable. Are you guys ready to look at some of the breads? Look. We got some pecan pies. Hazelnuts. And I gotta show you the fruits. Look at these fruit cakes. Oh, I feel like a kid again. It seems like we're at a coffee factory. Check this out. I think the beats go in there. there and then it goes all the way down Anya? so here's the tea and then check this out it's in a perfume bottle would you wear this perfume it smells like coffee beans The tea looks very aesthetically pleasing. Come on in the bread. And there's a restaurant in here too. And here's the coffee machine thing. Look at this. I'm gonna show you something that I haven't seen in a years. Maybe you already see it behind. 
hopefully not, but check this out. Ready? Ta-da! Do you see it? It's snowing. It's actually snowing. Oh my gosh. It's so crazy. So I don't know how it works in other countries, but at least in South Korea, there's like, depending on how like nice the place is, there's like cafes nearby. I went to the the gym and then went to the cafe and then when I was looking outside I saw like this white little fluffy thing is falling down and I was like no way and it's actually snow look at this isn't that beautiful you never see snow in, in California Excuse me, I just had to finish this this drink. But the drinks here are also different. Because it's so sweet. Way so 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 sweet. I think Koreans in general just have a sweet tooth. <coughs> this brings me childhood memories. Because like on top of this sand there would be a pile of snow and I would just make snow angels. <laughs> and there's a dog that's dressed up really well, well dressed for this occasion. Do you see it? Good morning. It's around 9am right now and I'm heading to the gym. Yesterday it was a holiday. It was Christmas. It's snowing. It snowed yesterday, which is perfect. Right now I'm gonna go exercise and today I'm gonna take you guys to the War Memorial Museum. No, not the War Memorial Museum, the National Museum. We ran three miles today. Hey. Yeah, let's see how you do under pressure. Oh. Yeah, I've been wanting this forever. I've been in the field with whatever they throw at me. Brush it off, pick myself up, moving on to the better. Okay. Hey. Yeah. Ain't no errors, baby. It's a new era. I wake up early, feeling rich like I'm Kesha. I get to the paper, boy. Extra, extra, extra. Work with me, you know that I got it. Come with me, let's take a trip to the islands. We up on the jet, we'll do more than just fly on it. Stand on that hill, you gon' die on it. Boom. Boom. Baby, I'm not one of them. You should try on it. Miss me with all that I'm on it and next. Yeah. Rip this up, I send you back to your ex. But good luck with that. This is big as All right. Workout is done today. I've been working on the push pull legs, linear regression, <laughs> not linear regression, uh, the linear progression. So today I hit pull. So I did, I think, 12 reps, three sets of pull ups. I, I ran two miles, which is around 3.2 kilometers. And one second, there's a car. There's a car going by. What else? I did a bunch of pull exercises, but it was really fun and I could definitely feel the pump. The hardest one was probably the bicep curls because those were really draining my energy, but I could see I was getting close to progressive overload, which is the goal. But right now, I'm gonna head home I have a lunch meeting with my old teacher that kind of helped me when I moved to America. And then afterwards, we're gonna go to the museum. So I'm excited to take you along.
All right, we have arrived at the National Museum of Korea, and it's very, very modern. Are you ready? Check it out. I think it's this whole structure right here, and I wrote it down some notes. So this is currently located in Yongsan-gu, which is near the historic Gyeongbokgung Palace. Uh, maybe some of you guys have seen it, and Gyeongbokgung is like a very grandeur very majestic place because it's one of the biggest um, historical palaces I think there's five in total and usually I think kings and queens used to live there so again like symbolizing kind of like the the majesty let's see I also wrote down like a couple of notes because I wanted to share some insights <clears throat> and talk highly of South Korea, of course. The museum's modern and striking architecture is a blend of tradition and modernity. And this design incorporates elements inspired by historical Korean architecture, making it a visual masterpiece. Kind of already, you know, that's kind of a given because look at how beautiful and modern, you know, like the elegance of the design. Well, now that I look at it more and more, it just looks like a, a slab of concrete or like a slab of white brick but I like the the centerpiece and how sleek it looks and I also like this uh oh one second let me flip it over there's a I don't know what you call that like a little resting place it's not a palace I don't know what the right the right word is but that's pretty cool so there's over 220,000 artifacts, including treasures designated as national treasures. And of course, this plays a vital role in cultural diplomacy, fostering international understanding and collaboration through exhibitions, partnerships, and cultural ex exchanges with museums all over the world. And I think there's around 220,000 like art pieces. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show it to you, to y'all. All right, forget everything I said about you know, the slab of brick. Once you come up here, I think your jaw is gonna drop just because of the view. Look at this. I'm gonna flip the camera. Boom. There's a huge arc, but look at the view. You can see the Namsan Tower over there. There's a revolving restaurant all the way up there. My aunt, I think, went there for a, for a, a dinner date. Isn't this beautiful? There's like a revolving, it doesn't revolve this part, but it's like a cylinder something. Exhibition hall, that's what it is. But this place is massive. We're gonna get closer. Oh, and then I, got, I think I gotta get tickets here. So we'll do that as well. But first, let's check out the view. Check this out, look. You ready? I'm about to appear on the screen in three. Ah, uh, there it is. Hello. <laughs> The view is really breathtaking. I think you get a really good sense of soul from up here. Check it out. Pretty cool, huh? That's called Theater Yong, and Yong stands for dragon. As you can see, the dragon right up there. You see it? Yeah, right there. All right, let's get our tickets and then we're gonna go inside. All right, so apparently the tickets, okay, so I was correct. Online, it said it was free and it is free. The ticket office is for like a, a special exhibition and the special exhibition, it came, I think last week, so. We're gonna go into the cylinder thing that I was talking, I was talking to you about. Whoa! Look! 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 Do you see it? This is a cylinder. That's how it looks from the inside. Isn't that pretty cool? Huh? Huh? All right. So we're gonna enter through this, through this, through this hall. I picked up a little guide, and what's cool is. It tells you kind of like the main events. So it says, look at the Buddha, 
there's a lotus flower. I did take a little look at this on the internet to like see why these are famous pieces. And I think, I think during this era, like Buddhism was very popular. And I think there's uh, also things related with the the cordial and the chun the cordial and cordial shide and then the chun some oh, man I'm not a history buff but we're on the second floor and so we're gonna we're gonna start. visited a room of quiet contemplation when i first saw the pensive buddy stava i didn't really think much of it but outside there was some i guess like additional information and the two statues i think one of them was created in the late sixth century so it's very old and it's considered a national treasure it's created with beeswax clay and some some type of metal I think bronze and I think the meaning of it is they're sitting in a not a full lotus position like that's when both of your legs are folded kind of in uh, crisscross apple applesauce but instead they're like one's pondering like deeply in thought and it's it, it's half so he's like the description was stating how he was pondering about going into a state of enlightenment kind of like Siddhartha I think it's Siddhartha, the the person. I forgot the name, uh, the Buddha's actual name, but but him. So yeah, learning about it, I think, made me kind of appreciate the the piece more because I think without that insight, I wouldn't have known, you know, why it was so quiet, why the room was completely dark. But it's trying to portray that, you know, this. Um, figure is deeply in thought and maybe even some were saying that it was having compassion for uh, human suffering or maybe knowing the secrets to the universe but yeah that was the first piece let's uh, move on this painting depicts Fuxi and Nuwa from the ancient Chinese creation mythology and talk about how this symbolizes the creation of the... Alright, so this exhibit that we just went to was about the Mesopotamian civilization and we received some of these works from New York and it talks about how despite Mesopotamia being an old civilization and it's quite overlooked, there's they were kind of like the leaders of you know, like engineering, politics, etc, etc and like they were afraid of losses and sufferings as well which is like also recorded so i thought that was really cool mm. and just like the brilliance of human technology because they've kind of laid out the the bible or like the the foundation of modern society so that was pretty cool a lot of these porcelain came from different regions of china and they were really highly valued by aristocrats, I believe through the Silk Road. Tranquil and calm, doesn't it? so tranquil each and one of them with the eyes closed and the mouth slightly smiling 
Buddhism was really popular in Korea, largely influenced by China during the Three Kingdoms period, until I think in the Joseon period they were banned. But this is what I mean from earlier that this is the full, I think, the lotus position where you're crisscross applesauce, reaching enlightenment. Pretty cool. So I didn't know this, but each sign, it's a symbolic gesture made by Buddha or Bodhisattva with hands or fingers. Each mudra has a specific meaning and this can be expression of enlightenment or prayer. So not all of them are enlightened. These are kind of like the utensils, not only the utensils, but the plates that was used during the Goryeo period. And I think I remember these because we had like similar plates when I was young. I think they were created with the temperature that's beyond 1200 degrees, which is really, really hot. These type of celadones, I think that's what it's called, they mean blue flower in Korean.